Hey, what's up everybody? This is CLS All-in-One. In today's video, I will show you how to replace the transmission control module in a 2012 through 2018 Ford Focus with a 2.0 liter four cylinder engine. And I will also cover a step that may or may not be necessary, which involves calibrating the TCM with the transmission using TCM adaptive learning programming with Ford's IDS software. So to start with, I would recommend purchasing a TCM that has been pre-flashed with Ford Focus software, which will save you a lot of time and headaches. In some applications, you may be able to just purchase one of these TCMs and it might just work as it should after installing it. But with my car, it did not shift correctly until I performed the TCM adaptive learning, which is still much easier than performing a complete flash of the Ford Focus software. And I will cover how to do this with a lot more depth later in this video. But for now, let's go and get started on the mechanical side of this project. So located on the driver's side of the engine compartment is where I'll be working. And I'll start off with removing the positive battery cable from the battery. And I believe this is 10 millimeters. Next, the entire air filter box can be removed after it's unplugged. Or if you want to go ahead and replace your air filter while doing this job, you can go ahead and take the top off the air box with an eight millimeter socket and driver. Now the air filter can be removed by tipping it up on the back side, then pulling up. Then this wire harness can be unplugged and this clamp can be loosened with a flat blade screwdriver or a seven millimeter socket. Then located towards the front, you'll find a rubber strap that secures the air filter box to the air inlet. Go ahead and loosen this. Now the air filter box should be loose. Just go ahead and wiggle that while pulling up at the same time and it should come right out. Then the drain port for the air filter box can be removed with a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet. And sometimes the size of this bolt can vary. And now I have access to the TCM, which is located right here. And circled here is the two wire harness connections that will need to be unplugged from this module. And here's a look at the same connections from the bottom side of the engine. And because this car is very low to the ground, I did go ahead and park this on a set of ramps so I can access the bottom of the engine as well which makes this job easier. Before unplugging these, there is a couple of spots where the wires will need to be pulled loose as shown here, highlighted with the arrows. And there's also some tubes at the bottom and top that will need pulled loose as well. Now each wire harness can be unplugged by pressing a small tab as shown here, circled in yellow, then pulling on the handle, which unlocks the harness. And since these are rather big, they can take quite a bit of force to remove them. And what worked for me was to just wiggle the plug while pulling at the same time. So now I have the bottom one unplugged and I'll do the same thing with the top connection. Now the 10 millimeter mounting bolts for the TCM can be removed and there should be four in total. You should have one at the bottom, one on each side and one at the top. And for myself, I found it was easiest to remove the bottom and side bolts from underneath the car. And there is one bolt that is a little bit shorter than the rest. So you want to keep track of this location so you don't get this mixed up. Now the TCM is ready to be removed. And for this, I'm just going to grab it by hand, then begin wiggling it while pulling out at the same time. And it should come out. And once it's popped loose, I just need to finesse it out of there because it is kind of a tight fit. And when removing this, you'll want to make sure that both O-rings come off with the TCM. As you can see here, one of them is missing. So that means it's inside the hole. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Otherwise, that's going to give me some issues when I go to install the new TCM. And here's a look at the new one, which comes with new O-rings and has been pre-flashed with Ford Focus software. And before installing, I like to add just a small amount of grease to the gear and O-rings, which makes this install go a little easier. Now it's time to place the new TCM in position. So I will line it up at the holes, then begin wiggling and pushing it in place until it's flush. And this may take a few attempts to get this to line up properly. Once it's in position, I can then begin securing it with the four bolts. And I'll start with hand tighten these first in a crisscross pattern, then begin torquing the bolts with about 10 foot pounds of torque in a crisscross pattern as well. Then the two wire harness connections can be plugged back in. And these will need to be wiggled while pushing down and pulling the handle at the same time to get these to lock in place. And 
Now the wires can be resecured to the side of the TCM with the existing clips. Then these tubes can be placed back in the holders at the bottom and top of the TCM. Next, the drain port can be installed and secured with a 10 millimeter bolt. Then the bottom of the air filter box can be installed by placing it in position, then pushing down firmly. Then the air intake hose can be pushed back in position on the air filter box and secured with a flat blade screwdriver. And the strap towards the front can be rehooked to secure the front of the air box assembly. And then this wire harness here can be plugged back in. Next, I will install the air filter by tipping the front down first, then pushing the back down until it's flush and lined up with the hole properly. Then the top of the air box can be installed and secured with the four 8mm screws. And now it's time to go ahead and hook the battery back up and get this secured with a 10mm socket. And lastly, I'll hook up a battery charger to get this charging and ready for programming. When attempting any type of programming with modules on a vehicle, you want to make sure your battery is fully charged and has no chance of dying. Otherwise, it could cause potential issues. To perform the TCM Adaptive Learning with the Ford IDS program, a IDS compatible OBD communication device is necessary, such as this VCX Nano, which plugs into your OBD port on your vehicle, and the other end of this has a USB cable that plugs into a host device which features the Ford IDS software. And for my host device, I'll be using a Windows laptop, which I just installed the Ford IDS software on. To obtain the IDS software, you can visit the Ford website using the links down below in the description. But to activate the software, you'll also have to buy a license, which is super annoying. But I believe you can also use the FJDS software as well, which is quite a bit cheaper. Or there's also a program called Forescan that can perform some of the same type of programming for a cheaper cost as well, but they are not supported by Ford. With all that being said, in this video I will only be covering the IDS software, but one more thing I would like to mention is that with the VCX Nano device I purchased, it also included a download to a special patch version of the IDS software with a free active license. But that's all I'm going to say about that. So to start with, I have my VCX Nano plugged into my car and hooked up to my laptop with the ignition and the on position. And I just started a new session, so I'll hit the checkbox now to continue. And now as long as everything's working correctly, it should establish a connection to the PCM. And right here, my vehicle popped up, so I'll select yes. And once this screen pops up, I'll just hit the check button. Now I will select the toolbox icon at the top, then select powertrain, then transmission, then the TCM adaptive learning. And here's a little bit of info about the adaptive learning process. This function allows the TCM to learn new parameters after a component replacement, which must be performed as recommended in the service manual procedures. So we'll start off with the TR sensor so we'll highlight that, then hit the check button. And just to let you know, this process will take a little bit longer in real time. I have sped this up just a little bit so it doesn't take so long. So we're going to start with the perform adaptive learning. Select yes. Make sure the transmissions in park. Now it's time to learn each position, so I'll click the learn position then switch to reverse, click learn position again, then to neutral, and click the learn position, then do the same thing for drive, and low, which is going to be S on my car. Then after that's complete, I'll hit the check button at the bottom, 
and right here you can confirm all the gears so you can just manually switch through all the gears and it should read the same thing on the screen as what's going on in your car then after making sure all the gears are reading correctly you can hit the check button at the bottom now it's asking me to turn the ignition off so i'll go ahead and do that then hit the check button then i'll wait for it to power down and get back to the menu Now I will select the shift drum option, then hit the check mark, then turn the ignition back on, then hit the check mark again, and select yes. And now I need to make sure the transmission is in the parked position, then I'll depress the brake pedal and hold, and click to continue. And once that's complete, I'll click once more, then switch the ignition to the off position, and click to continue. So basically after each step there will be a power down involved so this will take a little bit of time. Now I will select the next option which is the clutch and click yes to continue. Then switch the ignition back to the on position. Then make sure it's in park and press the brake pedal all the way down and hold it in position. Then click to continue. And at this point, it's going to perform a bunch of different tests, which involves revving your engine up and down. So this whole process is pretty easy to do. All you need to do is just keep following the on-screen prompts and you'll make it to the end. That is, as long as your TCM is working correctly. So I'm just about done at this point. I just got a few more tests to make it through. And unfortunately, this is the second TCM I purchased. The first one actually failed during these steps right here. But it looks like this one has passed, and it's good to go. And once all the adaptive learning is complete, I can hit the check button to continue, then switch the ignition to the off position, and wait for the TCM to power down once more. And once it returns to the menu, I can select Exit, then unhook everything, and take the car for a test drive. And it looks like my car is now fixed, and it's driving great. Okay, it's now time for me to go. If you like this video, if you could, hit that like button, and please subscribe. And have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.